हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू इन्फिनिटी फिजिक्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल स्टडी अ चैप्टर फ्रॉम क्लास टेन सो अवर टूडेज चैप्टर इज चैप्टर टेन लाइट रिफ्लेक्शन एंड रिफ्रैक्शन बिफोर नोइंग समथिंग अबाउट रिफ्लेक्शन एंड रिफ्रैक्शन वी शुड नो सम बेजिक प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ लाइट सो वट इज अ लाइट लाइट इज एन इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वे विच प्रोड्यूस सेंसेशन इन अवर आई because without light we cannot see anything around us it means when light falls in our eye on our retina we can observe we can see the things around us it means there is a thing there is a electromagnetic wave which produces sensation in our eye and as light is an electromagnetic wave it does not require any material medium to travel and if you have heard about the sound so sound is a mechanical wave because without medium without air sound cannot propagate we cannot talk with each other without air it means to propagate sound needs a medium but here light doesn't need any medium to propagate and from the sun the light reaches to earth without any medium that is through vacuum the light reaches earth and hence it is called a non mechanical wave the speed of light in vacuum is about 3 lakh kilometer per second it means it travels 3 lakh kilometer in 1 second and in simple words we can write it as a 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and the speed of light is denoted by letter c as the light is a wave so all the wave has its own wavelength and light is an electromagnetic wave so what are other electromagnetic waves the other electromagnetic waves are x rays gamma rays you have heard about this right ultraviolet rays infrared radar tv short wave amplitude modulation these waves we are using in our fm radio right so these waves are also electromagnetic waves x ray and uh, ultraviolet rays that is uv rays gamma rays these rays are very dangerous and they cannot produce any sensation these rays are also can they, they also cannot produce any sensation in our eye but the waves in the range of 400 nanometer that is the waves having wavelength of 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer that is from violet to red this wavelength of electromagnetic waves this range can produce sensation in our eye and we can see the world around us and therefore we can conclude that the wavelength of light that is the wavelength of electromagnetic waves whose range is from 400 to 700 nanometer is called a light so it's another definition so the wavelength of light is from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer light tends to travel in a straight line and another property of light is when light falls on any surface mainly three phenomena happen that is either it may reflect that is bouncing back it may refract that is it bends its velocity changes or it may get absorbed that is in the summer if the light falls on any surface right it gets heat up because this surface absorbs some kind of energy from the light now let us move ahead with reflection of light what is reflection of light simply we can say it's a bouncing back of light when it strikes on a surface so here we have a surface this kind of a surface on which the light is incident and after incident it reflects back it's like a ball when we throw it like this it strikes at this point and it bounces back so similarly when light falls on this surface it's also bounces back so we can say the bouncing back of light from a surface is called the reflection of light and before studying the laws of reflection you should know some terminology the ray which is going to incident on a surface is called incident ray the ray which bounces back is called a reflected ray and a imaginary line which is not actual but an imaginary line which is perpendicular to the point of incidence or point of surface right suppose there is a surface 
and here the light is incident so at this point we have to draw a perpendicular line and that imaginary perpendicular line we call it's a normal line it's an imaginary it is not real so what is the law of reflection you have studied in the class 8 also right that the angle of incident and angle of reflection are always equal so what is the angle of incident the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the incident is called the angle of incident and the angle between the reflected ray and the normal is called angle of reflection so this angle are always equal whatever kind of a surface either it is a polished or it is a rough surface this law is always followed so here we can see that the second law is the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incident and the first law the incident ray means this ray the reflected ray and the normal all lie in the same plane you have your book right and this book has many page so suppose we assume that this book has 250 pages so all these pages are like a plane they are two dimension hence they are called a plane so our incident ray is in this plane so after reflection it will remain in the same plane it will not go in the other plane so we can say the incident ray the normal and the reflected ray all lie in a same plane and the angles we have to always measure with respect to the normal now what are types of reflection if the surface is like a plain mirror it is completely polished and shining if we can see our face clearly and that kind of surface are called plain or polished surface and when light falls on that particular surface if the light rays coming are parallel so after reflection they will move parallel so that kind of reflection is called regular reflection but if the surface is rough that is like a table chair walls all these uh, all these surfaces are irregular and when the parallel rays these three rays are parallel rays so after reflection they are moving in different different direction see they are not going parallel so this kind of reflection from a irregular surface is called diffused reflection or irregular reflection many students have doubt that in a diffuse reflection that is if the uh, ray if the light falls on an irregular surface their uh, laws of reflection will not be followed but it is wrong whatever the kind of surface laws of reflection is always followed why you have to draw the normal at the point of incident so here the point of incident lie in the same line hence the rays go parallel but here the point of incidence is here so if you draw a normal here means this ray follows the laws of reflection similarly if you draw a if you draw a normal here see this ray after incident it is going like this so we have to draw a normal here so this angle and this angle always equal whatever the kind of surface laws of reflection are always followed now let's study about reflection by plain mirror so every day in the morning you see yourself in the mirror and that mirror is a plain mirror so what are the characteristics of the image formed by the plain mirror here you see there is nothing behind the mirror right here nothing behind the mirror but you observe here a whole world behind the mirror so there is a virtual world there is a not a real world so that type of image in the mirror which is not real we call it's it's a virtual image and another thing the image this image you cannot obtain on screen that is you can only see in the mirror so that type of images are called virtual image and those images which can be obtained on the screen are called real image that is when you are going to watch a movie in that movie 
you see there is a projector and from that projector there are image there are some pictures on the cinema screen right so you can obtain you can touch that image and that are in the real world so that type of images which can be obtained on the screen are called real image and that cannot be obtained on the screen are called virtual image also the image form is an erect image that is if you are standing here with your head up in the mirror you also observe that your head is up so that kind of image is called erect image if you observe that head is up but in the mirror you observe it like this head down then that kind of images are called inverted image but in the plane mirror the image is erect that is it is upright it is not upside down behind the mirror is same as the distance of the object in front of the mirror that is if you are standing one meter away from the mirror your image from the mirror is also one meter away actually there is nothing behind the mirror if you try to observe if uh, behind the mirror there will be nothing but you see there is something behind the mirror and that is a virtual world and hence this image is called the virtual image so whatever the distance you are away from the mirror your image will be at the same distance and another property is the size of the image form is same as the size of the object that is if you are 5.5 feet tall then your image is also 5.5 feet tall so the size of the image is same as the size of the object and the image is laterally inverted what do you mean by lateral inversion if you draw a l here and this is your right side and this is the left side in the mirror you will observe like this now this is your right side and this is the left side so what happens here here the right becomes left and left becomes right so the image is laterally inverted but not vertically inverted so that kind of inversion is called left right inversion another example if there is a arrow right and which is half like this so if you place it against mirror right here there is a left side you have a mark like a line in the mirror you will observe it like this so this kind of inversion is called left right inversion now in the next lecture we will study about spherical mirror 